In the last video, we were looking at how we can calculate the exoplanet's orbital radius. And we were doing that using this graph right here of velocity versus uh, time. And uh, so just to review quickly what we had learned then. So we had actually done, uh, I mean, we used the spectrum of the star. And the spectrum of the star, what that told us, of course, well, it gave us this graph, but it also got us the luminosity of the star and then technically the mass of the star. Well, then the graph here, that graph right there to the right here, this one, that tells us um, the speed of the star, uh, which is technically also then, uh, well, that's helpful for us, and also the period of the star, and therefore the planet. So if we look at this then, uh, this according to this graph right here, this is velocity versus time, then we can you know, do a dotted line right here like this right here, and that means that this height right here, this amplitude of this graph, that tells us V star. And if we looked at, let's say, the distance from a peak to a peak, for example, or it can be anywhere, it could be from here to here, but that tells us the period, the orbital period of the star. Now remember, the orbital period of the star is the same as that of the planet, but the velocity of the star, the speed of the star, well, that's different than that of the planet. All right. In the last uh, video, then, we learned, uh, so now we know how to calculate, well, let's say we calculated the orbital radius, and we called it D instead of R. So that right there is something we've already sort of done. So that meant when we looked at this uh, star, let's say right here like this, which is wobbling back and forth, and we've actually calculated the orbital radius d here, whoops, not r, we normally call it radius r, but in this case we're going to call it d here. This orbital radius d, we just calculated that, assuming it goes around in a circle, of course. Well then, what are we doing now? We're going to calculate the exoplanet's mass. It's actually not that difficult. All the hard work is done, basically, because from this graph right here and using our value of the orbital radius, well, then we can just do this. So to calculate mass, what do we do? We use conservation of linear momentum. Conservation of linear momentum. Now, don't forget what momentum is. Momentum is written as this letter P here. P equals mv. That is momentum. And because we know that momentum is conserved, that means the momentum before is the same as the momentum afterwards. And so, because of this, we can look at what the planet does and what the star does. So we can say, therefore, we can say that, uh, well, the P for the planet, in other words, the uh, momentum for the planet will be equal to the mass of the planet times the speed of the planet will be equal to well, the mass of the star times the speed of the star. Now, we know this mass and we know this right here from the graph. And we want to calculate uh, mp here. We want this mass. But we can actually do something with this vp because do you remember it is going around in a circle here, this thing. Because of that, then, we can say that the speed that it goes around in a circle, we did this uh, in the middle of our Kepler's um, third law derivation, that if we go all the way around in a circle, well, that means we've done a circumference of 2 pi r, and so we can see then that the vp here, so we'll say but, vp equals, well, the distance over time. You know, the speed of the planet is the distance it travels over a certain time. In this case, if it goes all the way around in a circle, that's 2 pi, normally it'll be r, but we call it d here, divided by the time it takes, which is the period. So then we plug that back in. So mp then, and instead of vp, we put in 2 pi d over t. All that equals m star v star. And therefore, then, we have our answer. We know that the mass of the planet, well, I'm going to get rid of the 2 pi d by putting them on the bottom of the other side. So that means I'm going to have m star v star over 2 pi d. All that's going to be multiplied by the period. That is how I will actually calculate, then, the mass of the exoplanet. So we can 
calculate then not only the orbital distance whoops I didn't mean to do that not only the orbital distance but also the uh, mass of an exoplanet and we do that just by using our basic laws of physics I think it would be fun then to take a look at this and do a real example because if we look at this then we got the mass of a star basically from the spectrum we got V star from this graph right here of the radial velocity versus time we can find that and we already calculated d that was the orbital distance and we know the period again from the graph so that's how we can actually estimate the mass of the exoplanet and so let's take a look at a real example so this is an exoplanet called hd 28185b it's not really very nicely named they're not very elegant in how they name them they're named after the star and sometimes by the survey uh, that they used in order to do this so this one here is called HD28185, because that's the name of the star, and then the planet, then they just call it B. So this planet orbits the star, HD28185, and the star's mass is 1.24 solar masses. Remember this M with the little circle with the dot means times the mass of the sun. And we know that the star is 138 light years from the Earth, and this planet here has the following radial velocity graph. And what's cool is this is taken from uh, one of the papers that they used to actually explain this. So this, this is real data. So you can see these data points here with their error bars. So it really seems to fit nicely this sort of nice sine curve here, this nice graph. So just from that, we can then ask, well, what's the exoplanet's orbital radius? And the next thing we're going to ask is, uh, what's the exoplanet's mass? And we're going to compare it in Earth masses. Well, I think it's important then to start off, first of all, by looking at what are the two things we can tell from this graph. And the first one is this V star, this value right here. Now, it's a little bit more than 150, and if we're really, really careful, we can see it looks like about 170. So I'm going to say that V star is approximately 170 meters per second. And if I try to get the period... The period, let's say I could do that from, I don't know, maybe here to here, something like that. If I was really careful there, I could also tell the period, that would be this. And the period is, a, it's about 383 days, I think that was the, if you're really, really careful. Of course, you could take a look and estimate it, and of course you'll get something around 400. When I looked at it quickly, it looked like around 400, this distance from here. You could also say it's the distance from here to that one. That would also be the period. So distance from this point to this point, or you can do from this top to this top, or this middle to this middle. So you can see this right here, for example, is around, well, this is 400. No, it's not. This is 300. This is 5. So this would be 400. So this would be about 375 here. And then you could say over here, well, this is about, let's see, this is 800. So this is about... Yeah, it looks like just a little bit less than uh, 775. It's a little bit less than that. See, this is around 400 then, right? From 375 to 775. It's about 400 days. So it's a little bit less than that. So that's why it actually is about 383 days. So just from that then, we can do everything we need because we have the mass of the star. And so, uh, what do we do to find the orbital radius? Well, you can use the equation that we found before. And that equation was that d cubed is equal to g times m star, divide that by 4 pi squared, all that times the period of the star squared. So we'll use this equation here. This is the idea. We're going to use this. And so we're going to find d. Well, we know G, uh, but we may have to do something with M here. So let's maybe take a look at that. And also the um, T here, the uh, orbital period has to be converted to seconds, and the mass has to be converted to kilograms. So we're going to need a bit more information. So let's maybe start off with uh, M star. Well, that equals 1.24 solar masses, and one solar mass, okay, that is around, well, it's pretty close to 1.22 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. We actually derived this before. We actually calculated that in another video. So then we could say that the mass of a star then is 1.24 times, well, pretty much 2 times 10 to the 30. Let's do that on our trusted calculator. 
So we have 1.24 times 1.99 times 10 to the power of 30. If we do that, we end up with, well, 2.46, let's just say, so something like, let's say maybe 2.5. 2.5 times 10 to the 30. So we'll say that then. So m star is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. That's going to be helpful. We're going to need that. And maybe in a different color, let's calculate something about the period here. Now we know the period is 383, let's say, days. But I need to convert that to seconds. And if I use my trusty little trick, I want to get rid of days, so I need to find something that I know is something per day, and I know there's 24 hours per day, and that cancels out the days. And I gotta keep going. I know that there are uh, 3,600 seconds in an hour, but if you want, I can do it slowly and say there's three, uh, 60 minutes in one hour. That gets rid of those, and I could say times 60 seconds in one minute. This is how you do it if you're really not sure. But again, 60 times 60 is 3,600. So if I do it this way, then I'm going to get this answer in seconds. Again, a lot of things in astronomy are just about not freaking out when you see big numbers or small numbers or working with scientific notation. So I'm going to do 383 times 24 times 3,600 because that's 60 times 60. And I get an answer of this. This is, let's see, 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 7 seconds. That's how much 383 days is. Well, then I can use this and just plug it into the equation then. So I know that my d cubed is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, because that's what the value of g is, that's this gravitational constant, times the mass, which is 2.5 times 10 to the 30, times t, which is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 7, but don't forget to square that, divide all that by 4 pi squared. That's going to give me d cubed. So, I'm going to use my calculator for that, and I'm going to just clear this. All right, so let's maybe take the most complicated one first. I'm going to take 3.3 .3 times 10 to the power of 7, and I'm going to square that. I take that answer and multiply it by 2.5 times 10 to the 30. Again, there's lots of ways of going about doing the calculation. I just like to do it piece by piece. You can do it however you like. So times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So that's going to give me this top thing now. So the top equals this. I take that answer and I divide it by 4 times pi squared. And if I do that, I get this answer for d cubed. But I don't want d cubed. I want d. So to do that, I take the cube root of that. Or if you know your um, exponents, that means a well, cube root is taking this to the power of 1 over 3. That's the same thing. So if I do that, I end up with 1.6 times 10 to the 11 meters. So 1.6 times 10 to the 11 meters. So I'll say that. So d, 1.6 times 10 to the 11 meters. But I wanted this answer in astronomical units because this maybe helps. This compares what it is on Earth because, I mean, this doesn't really necessarily tell us much. Like, yep, lots of meters. Okay. But if I want, uh, well, one astronomical unit, that's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. That's the definition of one astronomical unit. So what do I do? I take my answer of D then and divide it by this because I want to know how many of these fit in this. So because of that, I take this answer here, and I'll divide that answer by, in brackets here, 1.5 times 10 to the 11. I'm going to get an answer of, let's see, around 1.1. So that means then that the distance here, this orbital radius, is equal to 1.1 astronomical units. That is my final answer. So that tells me that if we compared it to that of uh, the Earth going around the Sun, it's very similar distance. It's almost the same distance around its star that the Earth goes around the Sun. So in the next video, we're going to look at how to calculate its mass, and then maybe we can make some conclusions about this planet.